formula for you. As you'll learn in a moment, Sylvia Ma, my cohort here, is a scientist, and so she loves equations. So our startup equation for female entrepreneurs is, of course, community. It's who you surround yourself with. We've already had some of those conversations this morning. It is resources, finding mentors, education, and a lot of what we do is about mentors, but it's also about peer connections in our community, the platform that we've built. Accountability and support, Sylvia will talk a little bit more about that, because as female entrepreneurs, we may need that additional support network. And scale, how do you take your business 10x? That's the conversation we always have with our community. It's, it's great what you're doing, but how do you multiply it by 10? And that's where our equation, so to speak, for startup success. So a little bit about me. Again, my name is Felina. The organization that I developed three years ago is called Hera Hub. It is a spa-inspired co-working space in San Diego. We have three locations. Now we're expanding nationally through a franchise model as well as soon to be international. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. Been an entrepreneur over 10 years. This is actually my third business. I wouldn't call myself a serial entrepreneur, but uh, I am definitely an entrepreneur at heart, all the way from about age seven when I started selling peacock feathers in my uh, local community at the corner store. So I really just, I eat, breathe, and sleep entrepreneurship. It is absolutely part of the culture and what Sylvia and I have built. So I'm Sylvia Ma. I'm originally from Venezuela, so that's why I speak Spanish and English, even though I look gringa. I'm sorry. Um, so how did I start? I am a science geek. I love the lab. I got my PhD in biochemistry and molecular biology, studying sea urchin fertilization. There you go. <laughs> what did I do with it? Nothing. No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> I started teaching in an engineering department at UCSD, and lo and behold, I loved social entrepreneurship. Um, I loved having my students work with the community partners to create vibrant new uh, solutions to whatever they had, whatever problems they had, whatever things that they needed to, to get accomplished in their communities. So I said, you know what, I'm going to get my MBA, why not? Um, so I loved business strategy, I loved entrepreneurship. The program that I, that I went to was at UCSD Rady School, which really focuses in on entrepreneurship. And then um, after that, I met Miss Felina Hansen. And all of the time that I was doing my PhD and my MBA, I was always focused on females. How do we get more females on the discussions of science? How do you get more females around the table? How do you do that? So I just flipped my career. I now am doing eating, breathing, <laughs> sleeping, female entrepreneurship. So I am the CEO of Hera Labs, which is the only female business accelerator in San Diego. Accelerator means that we push women through whatever they are challenged with. If they are starting a business, launch phase, growth phase, whatever phase they're going through, we're gonna push them through, ask those critical questions, 10X. Um, I am also an angel investor. I only invest in female-focused businesses, either a female startup, a female entrepreneur, or a female-focused business entity. Great. So I'm going to set the stage a little bit around this whole concept of co-working. In a show of hands, how many of you work from a co-working space currently or have in the past? OK, good. So a good portion of the audience. So we know what a co-working space is. The statistics are really driving startups, as we're talking about here today. And there is a prediction by an organization called MBO Partners in the United States, and they're predicting that up to 60% of the knowledge-based workforce in the United States will be independent by 2020. That's freelancers, that's consultants, and that's entrepreneurs. That staggering when you think about that. And again, we see some of those patterns globally as well. So where will everybody work? Anybody worked in this environment before? <laughs> right? Not ideal. Anybody worked in this environment before? <laughs> right? <laughs> Working from home. I saw your office there in your slide, Victoria. <laughs> so co-working is a global movement. They're estimating that there are about 3,000 co-working spaces across the globe now. The latest data we have is from 2013 from DeskMag. 
but growing extremely quickly, essentially doubling every single year here in South America, well over 150 spaces now. So it is a global movement, and it is the connective tissue for many, many startups and entrepreneurs. I will say, I'm just going to, a bit of a contrast. I know when I first started looking at co-working spaces in California, I also went to New York and Los Angeles, the spaces looked somewhat like this. Great communities, great spaces, but I'm 40 years old and I'm a little old to play beer pong in the corner <laughs> with a keg and, you know, <laughs> so... <laughs> What I have created, again, is a co-working space that's female-focused. We call it spa-inspired. If you enjoy running water, soft music, candles, nice lighting, and a safe, supportive setting, men and women are welcome to join the community. We have three locations in San Diego, over 300 members, and again, we are expanding nationally as we speak. So, a few trends in the United States, and we'll talk a little bit globally as well. Women are starting businesses twice as fast as men in the United States, and many different studies have been done on this particular trend and statistic. It's staggering. And again, this is expanding, and we'll talk about different industry segments, the types of businesses that are women are starting. Yes, technology, yes, med tech, all these you know, aspects of entrepreneurship, but there are some differences as well that we'll discuss. So differences, speaking of simply, and I get this question all the time, why women? Why would you start a co-working space that's focused on women? Number one, it's the environment. Truly, it's creating that safe, supportive, collaborative community, and the atmosphere is a big part of what we do. And frankly, and I believe this truly, I love men, men are amazing, but we are different. We think differently, you know, when you look at how women react and what they look at and how they respond to things, it is different. A little more on the collaborative focus, a little more on the relational focus. We need both in business, very, very important. So we're creating that platform specifically to cater to female entrepreneurs and it's working amazing. So a few uh, global trends here. Yeah, we wanted to bring this slide up because we wanted to congratulate Chile, okay? So um, um, for the trends in female entrepreneurship, Chile is number six globally and really supporting women entrepreneurs. However, when you look at United States number one, the, the statistic what we have in the United States is that only 37% of startups are started by women. So I don't know the percent in Chile, but you can just manage. We have so much more to go. We can support so many more women. We can fund so many more women. So a few examples of how we build this collaborative platform, because that is the title of our talk today, how to build that community and that platform specifically for female entrepreneurs. It does need to be slightly different if that's your target. So some of the programs that we put together, we focus a lot about creating a platform in that community. And again, as I mentioned before, a lot of what happens in mentoring is peer focused. It's not mentors that are outside of the community that come into the community, it's part of the community. And I say that word all the time, platform, platform, platform. It's such an important piece of what we do. So through monthly events where we're connecting our members, through gurus who are subject matter experts that donate their time to the community, who are part of the community. They're there on a weekly basis as well. Writer's Lounge, Book Club, Author's Salon. We do a, a Writer's Lounge on a weekly basis and what we call Business Booster. It's a quick shot of education based on the expertise of our community. So it, everything ties back to that community. And on to Hera Labs, the next part of the equation. Yeah, so part of Hera Hub and the equation there is that there is a platform. But how do we educate women in a very a more robust way? We created Hera Labs, which is a ex business accelerator. And um, part of it is having that supportive and community of just small class sizes, of being able to ask those critical questions to get you launched, to get you going on your business. And um, so we do it by, by education and also by mentoring. What I've done in my research is seeing, okay, what do accelerators do very, very well? So I've taken those things of that, that lean startup methodology. I've taught lean startup to all of my ladies in the accelerator group. I've taught lean startup to um, entrepreneurs in Colombia through um, Connect Bogota Region. 
And so really figuring out what does that mean? Even if you're starting up a, a, a service-based business, thinking about what is your, your customer? How are you going to talk to them? How do you build something that's around that customer base? And so the teaching philosophy, we just wanted to put, those pictures are all actually uh, our, our um, students, so I'm very excited about that. So we um, have a community of like-minded women that when we do have those pitch sessions at the end of our accelerator programs, that you have mentors around the room that are females, that have done it, have been there, ha can give you those resources right off the bat to get you started. If I can just add, just to frame this, a lot of incubators or accelerator programs will be three months, six months. Sylvie does this in 16 hours. She goes from an idea in someone's mind into putting that down, translating into market potential, numbers, pitch, the entire thing in 16 hours. So we condense it greatly, two eight-hour sessions or four four-hour sessions. Yeah, some of the ladies say I get an MBA in 16 hours <laughs> um, because we go through all the strategy. We just kind of touch on everything because you want to get that idea out of that woman's head onto paper, have her write it down, and, and put it out there in front of a, with a pitch deck to say, does this work? Is it yes or no? Doesn't matter if it's a no. How do you pivot? You talked about pivoting. Awesome. You know, you really need to pivot. You need to grow. You need to, to go to the, the, to the next level. You need to ask your next person next to you to say, how can you help me? How can I connect? How do I pivot? How do I grow? So um, I wanted to give you this as just some, some data around it. The top part is more of what we're doing as the accelerator. The bottom part is what we're doing in the future. We are starting an angel group for female angel investors called Hera Fund. So the reasons why are all needs-based. And saying, OK, so the accelerator, what is the opportunity? You know, women-owned firms have grown revenue by 72% in, in the last 17 years. You know, but the thing is that VC-backed, women-led businesses outperform all men-led businesses. That is opportunity, okay? We need to capitalize on that. On the bottom part is, there are women out there in the United States that have capital, but they're too scared, or they feel like it's too risky to be an angel investor. So how do we combat that? There is a funding need in the middle, is that female founders receive only three to 4% of venture capital funds. We need to increase that. And the only way to increase that is for the entrepreneurs to say, I can do this, this is a viable business, and I can talk to the woman across the way that is an angel investor, and she sees eye to eye with me. So how do we do that? I just wanted to kind of give you this, is that Hera Labs is on the top. We have the idea of Potential Lab is the one that we do at 16 hours. <laughs> um, we do a fem female founder intensive. That is more a three-month program. We hope to get a lot more technical um, um, startups that way. And then Hera Fund is on the bottom. We've talked to a lot of, of angel groups. You know, um, 37 Angels Pipeline Fellowship does a lot of angel um, uh, training, and we are partnering up with them. We have talked to Golden Seeds, which is another angel group in the United States. How do we do this well? Thank you for putting it up in, in the beginning, Victoria, that it is about not reinventing the wheel. It is through collaboration and learning from the next person who did it right before you, learning from them and doing it better together. So that's what we're doing. We're doing founders kind of enrichment on how to get funded and funders enrichment of how do you be a good angel investor? What does it mean to do due diligence so that you can really fund those really great startups? And I wanted to give you some statistics, is that we do, if you empower the woman and you launch the idea, you grow their business, and you help the local and global economy. And we've seen this in the last two years, is that we have been able to help 50 startups form, we have been able to help 57 businesses take it to the next level, and we've, done, we've been able to create 40 new jobs. And again, this is grassroots. It is not in the thousands, I know. <laughs> but it's about really those women that go through our labs are not the tech startups. I wanted to kind of reiterate that. Is that these are ladies that are doing incremental changes to their um, personal growth and their professional growth to be able to have one employee, two employees, three employees. But then saying, okay, how do you grow? How do you launch? How do you go 10x and have more jobs? So that's why it's a, you know, lower than necessarily a tech uh, accelerator, but we are proud of them anyways. And um, wanted to kind of reiterate as well is that 
to really make this work, it is a collaboration. I am Felina's angel investor. When she wanted to franchise and scale, lo and behold, how much did you need? Let's put it on the table, let's sign the document. Let's do it, let's do it together, okay? So that was Hera, Hera Hub, the co-working space. The business accelerator, how do we grow other women? How do we have this, what we've learned and what we're creating be able to be translated across the United States and across the world? And then saying, okay, let's put our money where our mouth is, okay? Let's not just talk the talk and say, oh yeah, go talk to somebody else about getting funded. We want to fund more female angel invest, uh, f female entrepreneurs. So vision, growth. My goal and Sylvia's goal is to support over 20,000 women with the launch and growth of their business. We are doing that via a franchise and licensing model. So we've already expanded to Washington, D.C. We hope to be closing on Dallas here very, very soon. And we have active conversations, not only in a dozen other cities in the US, but also into Canada, here in South America, and throughout Asia as well. So the formula again, just to, to revisit this. So one of the things, we wanted to revisit this again, but we also wanted to challenge you. Okay, what are the action items and actionable things that you can do in your community to build this equation? What is it? Okay, so um, the thing is that we want to say, okay, what is your, the community that you have around you? Is it robust enough? Do you need to create it? Who do you know that you can actually start in that grassroots way and grow it? What are the resources that you do and do not have? We heard from the panel up here in Argentina, it wasn't enough resources, but she created it. You see, isn't that awesome that one person can actually create those things and make a movement and start this movement, but you need to find out what do you have already? Do that needs assessment on your own community. You know that you're doing it as a startup. If you've ever been an entrepreneur, who's an entrepreneur in this, in this, in this room? Okay, you've, de you've done needs assessment. It's the same thing if you're trying to co do a community, if you're trying to grow something or accelerate other women or other entrepreneurs, what is missing in this equation and solve it and fill it. And that's, um, go ahead. Yep, so we wanted to give you a few examples of the women in our community that are building businesses and creating change. So um, quickly, we're gonna go through these. We wanted to give you that so that you know um, see, m like maybe you see yourself in, in them. Lana Feng, um, she is the uh, co-founder of Personal Diagnostics. It is a diagnostic company that goes to China and connects China and the US to be able to do clinical trials there and um, develop drugs in China. So she thought it was first gonna be just a service-based business. However, she, got so, she, she was so connected and so influential in China she said, I'm gonna start my own business, and now she's VC backed by the Chinese government. So we at Hair Hub and Hair Labs were able to say, how do you go 10X? How do you grow? And she met our challenge, which was awesome. Another case study. So we've got both biotech, high tech, but product-based businesses, service-based businesses as well. So again, Women are starting a variety of businesses. We've got a graph coming up at the end that'll show you kind of the breakdown of the community. So this is an example of a product-based business, a young woman named Nicole McDonald. Her first business, so this is her third business called The Sash Bag. It's a product that is manufactured in India, uh, Southern California based. It's uh, the 21st century fanny pack. Thank goodness that we uh, deleted the fanny pack. No, just kidding. Uh, her first business was a service-based business. Uh, she was a graphic designer. Her second business was a product-based business. She created an eco-friendly handbag line. That business was not, ultimately not successful, but she learned from that, and then through the community, found her co-founder, found her funder, found her entire advisory board, and has also found other collaborators in her business. She's been incredibly successful with this product and is now selling it throughout the United States and soon to be international. Another example is one of our members who came out of the biotech industry. And what we saw also with Lana Fang, the first example, also in biotech, came into uh, a company being sold and found herself to be a new opportunity as an entrepreneur, so to speak. And so, same, same idea. This is a product-based business. It's a golfwear line for women called Vivacity. 
and again, has been able to find resources, support, community that she needs to take her business to the next level. And Vivian's Colombiana, so. Sí. <laughs> uh, um, so this is the, the, the last case study. It is um, Amy Ostrowski, and she has a special education station. So she was a physical therapist and special needs educator. And of course, she's not making enough money to, you know, to, let's say, have a whole life like this. So she goes, how do I do this? How do I scale? So she created an online platform that is a member-based platform that, fee, uh, that um, families with special needs kids could go on there and get information, get, get downloads so that they can really make those educated and decisions for their, their kids' to children's lives. And we also focus on external collaboration. Again, that's a big part of this conversation, how as a co-working space do you connect with the community? So we support a number of female-focused organizations and nonprofits, and that is the model moving forward. How do we create that connective tissue? We are a hub. Every single night of the week, we have groups gathering, meeting, utilizing the space, events happening. It's an incredible ecosystem. So bringing it back to this equation again, people, it's the most important piece of this. Who are the mentors? Who is the community? How are you creating that connectivity between your members, between that community? How do you keep them engaged? We're a physical platform. There are a lot of online platforms out there. I think they have to both live together. We still need to connect in person. That's why we're at this conference, and that's why co-working spaces work. The education piece that Sylvia spoke about the support and accountability, I'll have you speak about that a little bit uh, in regards to Hera Labs. Yeah, so accountability has been, uh, been key. Accelerators that I've talked to, they, have, they say, okay, our, our alumni are alumni for life. What does that really mean? I promote all of my alumni from our accelerator, but we really have accountability groups that we set up so that they can learn from each other that whenever there is a, a problem or a challenge or what should I do? Do I need to have this contract? Do I, uh, do I have a new employee? Do I take on this new opportunity? You can ask that in a, an environment and a supportive environment so that you can make the most efficient decision that you can. And that's so, so key. So whatever environment that you have as a startup or as a community um, you know, leader, it's having that accountability is so, so important for that sustained success. And then lastly, finding the resources to scale, whether that means contractors for your business or funding. So again, back to the final equation here. So again, I want to ask again, what is your equation? What, what are the spaces that you need to fill? What is the opportunity that's already out there? Who can you connect with that you don't have to build it from scratch? And um, build it the best way that you can based on the community that you have in your vicinity. So thank you very much. This is a, a, another picture of Hera Hub and the space that, it is, uh, that we have. And um, we hope that you liked it and you can connect with us um, through every single channel possible. <laughs>
trying to figure out who's out there. We've had some great players. We, we talked to Tech Coast Angels, which is the, the, the angel group in San Diego. They're very excited about, about being with us. So we're, you know, we're, it's kind of like startup phase this year uh, on that, but we're really, really excited. Oh, wait, wait, let me, let me just, one more thing, I forgot. At the Women Investing Women's Summit, and I think that you mentioned too about having um, competitions. So Women Investing Women, we did have a um, pitch and we had about 12 female um, startups apply for that pitch, and they all, they, three of them pitched during the event, and one got, um, was like $3,000 of just funding, and um, a couple months of Hera Hub co-working space, and um, some, um, you know, help from Hera Labs. So it was really great, and they, uh, the one who won was Nanolumi, and they are a technology out of UCSD, I love it, a technology, but, um, and they did a really good job in, in, their, in their speech and their product was dynamite. Uh, so uh, thank you for, uh, for a great presentation. I, I think I just wanted to uh, add a, a data point to, uh, okay. to your comment about uh, Chile being, being was number six in, yeah. in the, in the yeah. global rank. So yeah. I just looked it up in the uh, Unoodle data set and Chile actually uh, has 32% female oh, founders awesome. uh, in our data set and is higher than anybody else in Latin America. Awesome. So yes. Woo. Congratulations, well done, Chile. Yes. That's great. Everybody heard that? <laughs> yes. Thank you. We're going to collaborate next year. <laughs> I need some data. So how can I become a Chilean lady? <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Yes, in the back. Jay Colvin from the Global Innovation Forum. I, you said you're building out um, to Washington, D.C., to Dallas, maybe maybe more. Do you have a vision for how you might connect your communities, um, you know, the hub as a whole, either online or in person? Yep, so both. Uh, so we have a, a, a global community profile for each of our members to be able to connect with other members in other cities. So there will be that online connection in that private community. We will also host annual conferences for our community to get everybody together. Because we have a theory of bookend theory. Yes. Is that you meet somebody <laughs> as your start of your bookend mm -hmm. and you meet them in person. Okay, you have a great connection. All of us are, I want to connect with everybody here, person to person, okay, eye to eye. But then between those bookends that you meet them again and you have a stronger connection, you connect online. So we're going to keep that same type of methodology and structure in place. Victoria, you had a question? I was just wondering what your model is for growth and expansion, and if you're looking for backers to support you to scale. Yep. Could, could, could you repeat the question? Sure, yeah. So how are we scaling, basically, was the question. Are we looking for backers, supporters? So we decided to scale the model through a franchise model, and that was a new business model for me. I don't have a background in that. But looking at that opportunity, how do we create that platform for women all over the world and, and potentially men to build their own community. And to do that is the really, truly the best way to do that. In a business model, we are not a nonprofit organization. In a business model is franchising because it takes the model of what we've done, it packages it together, and we teach other people how to do that. I'm not the woman to do it in DC or here in Santiago or anywhere else in the world, it's that person in that community that wants to build a strong platform for their community, taking a model that we've already proven and doing it in their city, and then creating those global connections between. One more? One more question? I have a question for you, <laughs> then. Um, can we have one person say what they're gonna do action-wise? with that equation, do you know what your holes are in your community and how are you gonna fill it? Or if you need help, let us know or, or across the room. Anybody want to take a stab? Come on, you just had coffee. You, get, you gotta be able to, <laughs> and chocolate. Even if you're an entrepreneur in a startup, you, you, you need to know your, your, your community. Do I pick on somebody? Yes. We will. <laughs> oh, come on, guys. Somebody. How, how are you building community? All right, all right. Uh, thank you. So with resources, startup website is we, of course, provide resources to that. 
perdón. Uh, so Startup Buenos Aires, we of course provide resources to our community, um, and we do so on in live events and, and through our own network. What we will do um, in the future is create an online platform where the resources can serve themselves. So the people don't necessarily need um, Startup Buenos Aires connecting people. We'll have an online platform for them to do it themselves. Great. Perfect. And you have some, some good connections to do that? You have some good tech people? Yes, we do. Okay. We're, we're building. Just in <laughs> case. Any other tech person who can help her, please help her. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much thank for you. having us. Really, really appreciate it. Looking forward to getting to know you.